great. Matt, what about yourself? What What are you excited about beyond uh, 2024? Uh, well, I, ru I run a book which is benchmarked uh, to X Bitcoin. There's no Bitcoin in my benchmark, and I own a bunch of Bitcoin, and I'm excited about the halving. And I look back at previous cycles, and the Bitcoin dominance tends to rise into and after the halving. And then folks who've made money on Bitcoin basically take their profits and do more interesting stuff, maybe with leverage on chain into the long tail of, of speculative assets. But I, I think the ETFs are going to be a big deal. And uh, I'm kind of selling some of these altcoin rally and adding to the Bitcoin stack. Nice. Bennett, what about yourself? Yeah, so I'm going to talk about this maybe from uh, an institutional perspective and you know maybe sure. an individual retail perspective. So from the retail level, I'd say some of the things that are exciting to me is some of the concepts of real-world assets, like what Franklin Templeton is doing. I like the idea that as a retail individual, it, you can make it easier to invest in and get more involved in some of these more liquid asset classes that were historically more difficult to invest low dollar figures in. And then from the institutional side, I'd say it's a little bit more forward-looking than just you know 2024 and beyond. This is probably... 2028 and further beyond that I'm really looking at, but I view there as a lot of potential for the use of smart contracts and stable coins for business to business, as well as for all kinds of automation from the perspective of just streamlining different types of contractual arrangements we have. You know, that requires a lot of regulatory considerations. There needs to be regulations put in place surrounding the whole stable coin architecture or the CBDC concepts. But I think there's a lot of potential for automation through the use of smart contracts with stable coins. And you know, going even further beyond that, you kind of get into the potential for a lot more streamlined automation of back office. I mean, coming from somebody as you know, an accountant, I don't view any role of the auditor or someone who's a trust writer disappearing. So I'll make that crystal clear. There's still subjective things that any business does. But for a lot of the, you know, very basic types of things like bank confirmations, for instance, I think blockchain has the potential that if you have both counterparties, like a client and your counterparty on a blockchain who's using stable coins and you have the invoice that's uh, digitized, you have the supporting documentation such as authorizations, you have the journal entries, and you have the value transfer that you can tie all into that one place and compare on both like both parties' financials in a secure, but you know, an, not anonymized, but an encrypted way. That has a lot of potential to streamline things. And so I look forward to where that might take us one day. We're still a good ways away from that, but I view a lot of potential there. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you're 100% right. Mike, what about yourself? Yeah, I, was, I keep thinking about Matt's comment around the banks. Um, <laughs> we built Foundry up in Rochester, New York, which for a lot of you in New York City, that's the other part of the state, closer to Buffalo. Uh, so I, I think of the banks that are they're going to have their Kodak moment, right, where they got to decide whether they're going to reinvent themselves or they're going to die. And I don't know when that happens, but at some point, I think uh, – I think that that's going to play out. In terms of the future, um, you know, at the last peak, two years ago, Bitcoin traded close to 69,000. There was 150 exahash that secured the network. And I've always been a big believer. I look at things from the Bitcoin mining perspective, but I've always been a big believer that you can only store so much value on chain based on how much security you have on that chain. And uh, today, since that point in time, th there has been almost a 3x increase in the security of the Bitcoin network. So two years ago, there was a trillion dollars stored on the Bitcoin network with 150 exahash. We are between 450 to 500 exahash today. So I think about where this goes in the future. The way I think about it is there's there's the ability to store a lot more value on the Bitcoin network based on the security that's been invested. And we see in the next two years, we'll see another 10 to $20 billion that will go into the Bitcoin mining infrastructure to continue to strengthen the network. It's an impressive number. 